Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Roots Podcast. And welcome to all the first timers, viewers and listeners alike. It is my pleasure. I have to say I'm a little giddy with excitement to have Rose Rosen with me today. Casting director extraordinaire, I love to say. Oh my gosh, I have so many questions for you, Rose. I wanna give you a chance to give your backstory because as I was digging in a little bit more before we connected, you know, just hearing the fact that you started as fashion designer, you know, and then it's like, boom. And then there's this pivot. There's a need, you find it, you do it, and you make it happen. So I'm gonna pass it to you and let people know in the audience a little bit more about you and how on earth you got into casting directing. I had to remember to unmute. Hi. So yeah, I got into casting. I started out not as a fashion designer, as a fashion editor after college. Huh? See, I there did. we go. I'm bad. I'm bad. Well, no, you're not bad at all. It's it, it was in the fashion world. And I learned how to do all the things, you know, cast talent, find locations, find the wardrobe, of course, and write the story. You know, because that's what uh, people do in the in the the journalism world. You do everything. So I learned a lot, and and that was years of that. And then um, and then I moved to Florida because um, I married a man who lived here. I like to say I was a mail order bride, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> that's another podcast. That's a different one. Uh, but, <laughs> but we're still married. And, um, anyway, we, um, I came down here thinking, oh, I would do that business. Cause I had a very good, good business in St. Louis. And, and then I found out nobody here really understood me and, <laughs> and I had to pivot as you know, now that's a word, but back then, maybe not. Um, and I started to, I went and sat with a talent agent I was friends with. And, and I mm. said, her, you know, what do you think I should do? She said, I think you should be a casting director. There's a real mean one here and you're nice. <laughs> so, so I think you have all the skills. So I go home and I use, I don't know. Do you remember when you could call the yellow pages? Yeah, right. I sure do. <laughs> so I called the Yellow Pages in in New York and looked up the casting directors, and I called a number of them and got a lot, a lot of information. And pretty much the next day, I said, "Here I am, here I am." And within six months, I had Edward Scissorhands, and I was casting that here. Yeah, and that that to me is, you know. I mean, is it luck? Is it the right timing, right place, all of that good stuff? I don't know, but how amazing that that's like your first major gig. Six months after doing, as you say, a pivot or a transition or an evolution, whatever all those buzzwords are, um, from going from fashion editor to casting director and landing that particular movie. Which, you know, again, like fangirl over here, you know, waving her hands because it was, it was really cool. I mean, big names, the whole, the whole bit. And so now you think about it, Rose, we were talking about this even before we started, or I clicked the record button. Nowadays, it's like social media, this social media, that. And it really made me think about, you know, I'm in PR, right? I'm in public relations. I represent you know, uh, high performance athletes, business organizations. I'm doing that stuff all the time, not in the film necessarily. There's like, people want to be discovered, right? Social media plays such a huge component to that, whether it's on TikTok, whether it's on Clubhouse, Instagram, it doesn't matter. So I'm really curious to listen and learn about your evolution and how you are finding talent. And if you're really considering this blue verified check mark influencer, as we like to say, as I'm air quoting it, if that's even of importance to you when you're really looking for talent. That is not important to me. I've never had a client uh, think about that blue check mark. And by the way, I don't have one. Uh, I do have a bunch of scammers asking me literally every day uh, if I'd like one, but no, I just delete them. Anyway, but 
yeah, finding talent, of course, has been such a huge evolution, like even over time, right? I started mm -hmm. with VHS tapes. And that's, you know, that was, that's maybe not about finding talent, but it's about getting talent from point A to point B so that people could see, you know, my clients could see what they're getting. And, and then, and then we went to CDs and then we went to, do you remember the FTP sites? I sound like I'm a hundred, but yeah. So, so I had to do that and figure that out. And I remember, you know, there was like one major error in that. Like I uploaded the whole eight hours of tapes in one chunk <laughs> and then my client that day said that's a big, that's a big oh. file and it's a crazy file yeah and then he's like well you know that'll be done next week <laughs> i need it today so you know i mean we <laughs> you know we we figure stuff out along and and this moment this pandemic is no different is my point it's just the, my whole career has been okay, now I got to do it this way. And then, okay. And, you know, and then next thing, casting software came around and I'm like kissing the ground these people walk on. So, you know, so I could, I could put out castings digitally all over the world now, it, you know, with a few hits of a button. So, and I can also scour social media. If I'm going to tell you the truth though, the chance of me scouring social media to look for somebody is zero. You know, that doesn't mean other casting directors don't do that, but mm -hmm. I'm not, I've done, it's just, it's all project specific. If I'm looking for a really specific person and, and, you know, I use the internet, however I use it, is it, is it TikTok? Is it Instagram? Is it just a plain Google finding a person who can do this thing and also, you know, be an actor? I mean, that's also the problem, right? At, mm -hmm. at some point, no matter whether you're unscripted, reality, game show, I don't care. I still, my go-to is somebody who at least thinks they're an actor. <laughs> and, and it's just better. <laughs> it's just better if, if, if I'm going from that place. So if I find them inside of this software, it gives me a little hope that they'll be a touch better at being on camera. And, you know, but there are a lot of levels of actor, right? I like when my clients yeah. say to me, well, that's an actor. I'm like, is it an actor that works once a year? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. How, is, how is that person <laughs> different than a non-actor? They're not. So anyway, I don't know if that answered the question, but. Yeah. yeah, no, it, it does. I wanted to follow it up with this notion because you said that you are using and it's saved you a lot of time and energy, the, the casting software. And so in my world, we talk to clients a lot about putting together press kits or media kits, you know, those one pagers, like, are those still a thing in your world or have they been completely scrapped? So... I'm not in the PR business. So we have, when you make a movie, there are kits that you will put together to present the movie to potential mm -hmm. buyers. So that happens. If I'm looking at talent, I basically look at them in the software. Sometimes an agent will send me like, it's just a link with the, the talent stuff in it. it, but it's basically all there. Like, that software is so cool that, you know, whoever's I or my client can push on the person's face and see their entire resume, see many links, see all their skills, everything searchable. So, so yeah. all their past gigs, all their everything is right it's, there loaded for you one time only. As long as they put it in there. Sure. Fair enough. They've got to do the work. They've got to actually make sure if they want to book a gig, they better show the talent that they've already been booked for in yeah. hopes to be considered. So, so you're still like, again, I guess a follow-up question because, you know, PR media kits, you're right. It's more about from that perspective, when the movie's ready to go, the doc, the whatever it is, reality, all that good stuff. But when someone's looking to get started, how, I guess it's really important. I was going to make the question of how important is it to have an agent, but it's only the agent that's going to get to you. So if we break it down, how do they find a good agent? 
Do you have any advice on that side of things? Yeah, I think it's really important to have a talent agent if you want to be at any point acting because they will, I mean, for 10%, you know, they're doing all the work, you, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it's not as hard to get an agent, particularly outside of Los Angeles and New York. It's a little bit harder there. But if you're at any other market, it's not too hard. You can just go into the SAG after website. You don't have to be a union talent to get a union agent. There's something people don't know. Um, and, and you can just um, go in there, get the list and send your materials out to all of them and then see who follow, follow up, you know, just like anything. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, here's a list of 10 agents in my area and I'm going to send them all my materials. I'm gonna follow up see if I get a response from any of them. If I do, then I can maybe decide, maybe there are two or three that respond and I can talk to them and, and really decide if, if it's a good fit because that needs to happen. You need to have a good fit with your talent agent. You need to feel like they're working for you and they need to feel like you're in the game with them. And, and it's a very important relationship. So yeah, get out there and try. I love that. And, and again, it's like we said before, when you're filling in, like make sure everything's there, put the work in. Um, you already said you don't likely go to social media to find the next big thing. I mean, you always hear the stories, right? So I was curious to know if it was true. Oh yeah, I got like discovered sitting and drinking my latte on the corner of this and that. Like, <laughs> like maybe back in the day, I don't know. Is that like a real thing or is it just, you know, a myth. I used to remember discovering talent on the street a lot more so than I do now. I mean, I just feel like, I mean, I used to go to bars for unscripted dating shows and, you know, go from one bar to the next to the next. <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I, I do, and, and I have, and I still do, if I see somebody that has a certain something, I will tell them here, mention my name to this talent agent and they will sign you. And I have done that many, 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 many times. And they're just like, and literally I've done it to strangers. <laughs> okay. So did you get any cool gifts as a result of them getting signed? I'm curious what the follow-up was. Oh my God. It, well, and you know, and then I'm the no gift gal, right? Don't send me any gifts. Cause I don't want to feel beholden to, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I do that whole situation. I say, you know, you want to gift me like tea is the thing. Right? <laughs> Cause no, I like to give people something that they can show whatever they want to show, but it's very, very cheap. And you know, so I like tea. I don't know. <laughs> Julie noted Rose like tea. Julie noted Rose, right? Rose like tea. Too I want to ask you um, to tell us a little bit because, of course, you have a YouTube channel. Perhaps the people that are joining us by a really interesting thing we got going on here. We're taping on Zoom. We're live on Clubhouse. I don't know what kind of back. We don't know what audio quality is going to be like. But listen, if they're not already checking out your YouTube channel, Casting Notes from Rose and Cam. Tell us more about that, please. Oh my God. So, so during the pandemic, uh, Kim Swanson, a casting director from Los Angeles and dear friend of mine, were on a Zoom. And we were doing, as we do, um, discussing how, you know, talent could be elevated. Let's say it that way. <laughs> and and we did. And we and we're like, and we're having this discussion. Well. I wish they knew this and I wish they knew that and blah, blah, blah. And we're like, well, I got some time. How about you? <laughs> I said, I hear this Zoom thing has a record button. <laughs> I bet we can do that and stick it up on YouTube. What do you say? She said, yes. And the rest is history. And we have, I like to say we're in our third season. We have about 30 shows up. I think wow. 10, 10 shows is a season. And we have people talking about working with Steven Spielberg and Meryl Streep. We have the executive producer, the number one show on NBC, The Weakest Link. We have um, Richard Lawson, Pat Healy, 
Um, Sarah Schroeder, the executive producer of the Chicago 7, the trial of the Chicago 7. I mean, you know, and these were basically just people that we, you know, we just opened our Rolodex and said, I wonder if he'd do it. <laughs> and acting coaches and makeup artists. And what we like to do is think about what we're missing and try and make sure that all the talent have enough information in there. And they're short shows. They're like 15, 20 minutes. And so they can get, and, and we, I make the guests focus on one or two points. That's it. Let's, let's just get a couple of gems of information out in this short time and be done with it. And I mean, they're, they're natural. They're not unlike this. And I think they're charming. I think more people need to watch them. And I think it's hard to get people over to YouTube. So please hit my link in bio on my Instagram, but you'll share those links. I will. Absolutely. Because I think what you're doing is so valuable. You know, the reason why I started the Roots podcast, and you've already alluded to it, well, I found myself like you with a lot more time on my hands come March, 2020. And it was always one of those, oh, it's a bucket list. I just want to have some fun tell some stories, add some value for people, you know, and that's what you were doing every time. First of all, big name drops. Okay. Like kudos to you, but also the fact that people that are interested in the biz that are really trying to level up their game, get in there, learn, do the work. It always keeps going back to, you got to do the work, you know? Yes. All right. Back in the day, you were found on the corner of such and such. We already covered that off, but now it's like, how do you stand out? How do right. you stand out? So if you're talking or have the ability to consume 15 or 20 minutes worth of, this is how you do that to get noticed, or this is how you, you know, the, the right makeup, the right look and feel, here's what you do for your headshots. I don't, I mean, again, I don't know all of what you're covering off on YouTube, but to me, that's such value. And that's what I'm all about with my community is building value. The whole notion of the Roots podcast is community over competition. There is enough for everyone. I truly believe in abundance. You know, this notion of ego and insecurities, like leave it at the door and let's go and bring our best self forward and lift each other up. There's a lot more out there for us if we just forget about, we don't have to compete. Yes, I know in the acting world, there's only so many roles for that one movie, but okay, you didn't land that one. Now, how do you get better in your craft you know, to get the next one that you're up for. It's just, it's mind, it's so intriguing to me to think about all of the details and what goes into casting anything, whether it's reality, you know, big time film, all of that stuff. Are you finding now current projects are more heavy on reality TV because of pandemic? Where are you focusing on now? It's certainly not. Um, I. It, there's a lot of, I mean, there's everything coming out of the gate now. At the beginning and during the height of the pandemic, I was, most of my clients and I, I did one personal project that was like all natural family kind of thing because it scared me other than that. Mm. Um, but, you know, we, we um, sorry about that. Uh, we are working on that sort of, pod people. That's what we, we did at the beginning, you know, that kind of thing. Like, you know, do, can we have a natural family for, for mm -hmm. this commercial? And, and it would just make it easier to shoot rather than try and quarantine people for two weeks. Sure. We don't even have that. So sure. yeah, we did that. And um, I don't, you know, I mean, and, and now it's just pretty much back to normal with precautions. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to be a part of anything that doesn't have some serious precautions. I believe we're still in, in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's good to be vaccinated. Enough. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Because that's also your reputation at the end of the day too. Right. If people are, you know, very much looking. So I always talk about it in, you know, from a social media perspective, people may not always be engaging. They're always watching. And we know how hard we work to build up our brand, to, you know, build a credible reputation in any biz or any industry. And all it takes is one wrong thing and it could be broken or gone forever. So that 
reputation management piece to me is, you know, again, it's in my wheelhouse. That's what we do in crisis management. So I can appreciate from your perspective, if you're putting your stamp on something and getting involved in a project, you need to go through your own checklist, just like an actor or anyone else that's perceiving, okay, here, you know, I'm sitting here in Canada and, you know, it's maybe slightly different than the States, but there's so much filming that happens in Vancouver or Toronto. And, you know, I have friends that are security guards on set and they're saying, yeah, it's pretty much, you know, it's back to normal, but they're in their trailers doing their thing and come out with their mask on and get to, you know, to the set, the scene, and that's it. Take it off to do the thing and, and get out. So it's, it's still happening. The business is still moving. It, it is. Thank goodness. I mean, I really had a bleak outlook for the first month. I'm like, what's going to happen here? <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. But, you know, we've, we've seemed to get past that and, and, you know, the film industry is, is rolling around the world yeah. um, it, safely, you know, or at least we hope. <laughs> that, is, that is the hope. That is yeah. the hope. Well, I wanted to, as we start to wrap up our conversation, I wanted to ask you a question about, you know, maybe lessons or things you wish you would have known <laughs> way back when or six months ago or whatever the case may be, because I always think even in the hard times, like, you know, when you're struggling, you're growing. And if everything is easy, then you don't really appreciate whenever, when things get really good. So there's always lessons to be learned. And so for our listeners and our viewers, if there were some takeaways that you would want to share, what would they be, Rose? Well, from the beginning of my career, casting Edward Scissorhands, I wish I would have known to not have my address public. <laughs> oh, yes. I had people stopping at my door wanting to be cast in that film. It was crazy. So, and I was pregnant and I was, it was upsetting to say the least. Um, And I, and I'm not a big fan of, you know, I think every day of my life has led to today and today's pretty good. So I'm not a big fan of what if I redid that? You know, the only thing I would have maybe added, I probably would have joined the CSA a bit earlier. Hmm. Um, uh, you know, I was like, you know, what is it? Groucho Marx said I would not be a member of any club who'd have me as a member. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of going with that, but I found such a camaraderie and friendship amongst other casting directors, because as you pointed out many times, um, we're unicorns. It's such a weirdo business. And you know, when I first went to a meeting in Los Angeles and I'm in a room full of 250 casting directors, I'm like, what? <laughs> this is crazy. How mm-hmm. neat is that? And one was nicer than the next. It was nuts. Yeah. And wow. it didn't feel it, it, you know, and, and the casting directors in clubhouse all, yeah. I mean, nice people. I'm having a room tonight with them. It's, I mean, you know, and, and so that I just say, just, I wish I'd have joined earlier, but you know, I, yeah. I'm happy with what it is now. And, and, you know, I think we learn a lesson every day. And so, so, so very true. So, so final, final thoughts from your perspective, and we may stay on a little bit um, on the clubhouse side of things to answer questions for people, but we'll be wrapping up the taping itself of the Ritz podcast, but final thoughts, where do you see uh, the industry going? Because as you said, like, it's kind of back to normal with safety, right? Safety in place. Okay. They're filming, they're doing like, I'm sorry. And I know that this is not necessarily a a film that you cast, but I'm still waiting for Top Gun. Like when when are we going to start seeing some movies being released? Do you have any inside scoop that you can share with me? Because I'm dying over here. I have no inside scoop. <laughs> I mean, I know people no, that releasing, releasing of anything that's been filmed. Like, obviously, we're not even able to go to theaters here. So they're probably going to just sit back and wait till it's all good and clear so that they can recoup some money. It's a whole different, you know, that is way above my pay grade. You know, I mean, I know these people, but the reasons why they'll release on the small screen and not on the big screen. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not going to even attempt to answer that. <laughs> Dang, I thought I was going to get it. I thought no, I was like, oh, I wish. Well, no. I can, I can bring you around to some people that would answer that, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and what about, and any thoughts, again, I know I keep saying we're going to wrap up, but this is just cool. Um, any thoughts on Netflix and how it's just been taking over and Amazon Prime and, and all of that? No, no thoughts or? Well, I mean, I think, I think it's on the table. There's, it's obvious what's happening. I don't think there's any question. I hope that we go back to theaters when it's safe. I mean, we are, you know, America thinks everything's mm -hmm. fine. Uh, so <laughs> not, not here yet. Not where well, I am. Well, we only have 37% vaccination. So I don't know that, that that's anything to write home about, but it's something. <laughs> Anyway, um, but it's, you know, I, I obviously content is king. Uh, there's going to be so much content needed. And I think that's what, what we need to know is, is content is needed and get out there and make some. And that's what we're doing. And, and, you know, you never know, maybe the Roots podcast will be a show on TV. Yeah, that. <laughs> Do you know, I get this and no, nobody will really see, although on Clubhouse, if they're, if they're listening in on Clubhouse, they would see that um, my avatar, my photo up there. I see none of it, but I have been told, Rose, that I look closely, my hair is not down, but I've been told I look like Claire Dumpy from Modern Family. And I'm like, yeah, if she needs a stunt double, maybe they'll call me one day. But, you know, it's always that whole, oh, you look like, like yeah, celebrity look alike. Maybe there just needs to be a show on that somehow. Maybe we can rope that in and we'll, we'll figure that out on another, um, another conversation. But I, I just find it so interesting that between what we were able to achieve in Clubhouse and making community happen here, taking it off a of clubhouse, going on to Instagram or Zoom and YouTube and everything else, the opportunity and the possibility is seriously endless. So as you said, just keep so making true. the content, right? Make the keep, content. Keep trying stuff. I mean, that's what we're doing now. It could be terrible. And we might have to redo the audio on this, you know, which would be, you know, which is, what's the difference? You got another, you know, 30 minutes, it's fine. You know, that's... The, I mean, you think of when we're on a film set, you know how many takes we do? <laughs> you know, just, I, I don't want to know, but I'm sure they don't get them all in the first take. Right? But your podcast, you do it one and done. <laughs> I do the That's same thing. That's what we like to call authentic and raw. <laughs> Isn't that funny that that's where we've gotten back to like nothing, like, like no, like this is it, authentic. I mean, is that some kind of band-aid that we're using just so that, so that we can do this at-home video? I mean, it used to be called low-level at-home video, and now it's authentic and real yes. and yes. and sellable, and people watch it and and listen to it, and it's great, and they love it. So, and your pod, I mean, your podcast is great. People should oh. definitely tune into this. I, I love it. Well, they're going to get... Even if we decide to do a second one, I think it would be hilarious to do a before and after. <laughs> <laughs> First take, second cut, you know, like it's, it's just fun. And as you say, I mean, it's relatable. We're sitting in our homes. I mean, listen, I've got a, I don't know, a $300 mic on a stand and, and a big old monitor with a camera stuck on it. Like that's about as high tech as I get. Um, in all of my work, right? So yeah. it's it's just been a pleasure. We're going to wrap up the podcast, the official taping of the first cut, and we'll see what happens as I'm doing constant air quotes and the people that are listening and have no idea what's going <laughs> on. Um, I want to thank you, Rose, for this. It's been so much fun. Great insight. We'll make sure to let everyone know to dial in and check out that YouTube channel casting notes from Rose and Kim. Sounds like fun. I'm certainly going to check it out. And we'll include your social media handles as well to make sure that they're in there and engaging in your content and check out your podcast rooms as well. 